going to do our last question in the chapter two, uh, test two review uh, for the physics boot camp, question 20. Then we're going to start the problems. A uh, car moving at 50 km per hour skids 20 meters with locked brakes. So if you're going 50 km per hour, you're skidding 20 meters. How far will the car skid with locked brakes if it is traveling at 150 km per hour? Okay? So basically, this is three times the speed of this. You're going 150 km per hour. How, how far are you going to skid? In this problem, we're not necessarily interested in the details like what is the force of friction on the car. We're not interested in the acceleration of the car. Uh, so you don't have to go way out and uh, uh, calculate the acceleration and the force. Basically, what we're interested in is the concept. Work is equal to force times distance, and that's equal to the change in kinetic energy, right? Force times distance is equal to half mass V final squared minus half mass V initial squared, right? So in this case, in both situations, the initial velocity of the car is something. The car is traveling, right, with a certain initial velocity. And then eventually the final velocity of the car is going to be zero. The brakes uh, are going to supply a backward force, friction, F, which is going to do negative work, right? Well, that was the problem that we did uh, a couple of problems ago. We talked about whether or not there can be such a thing as negative work. And the answer was yes, yeah, friction can do negative work. So the work done by friction is FD, actually it's cosine of 180, right? Because it's opposite to the direction of motion of the car. So it's FD cosine of 180, which is gonna be negative one, right? So we have negative FD is equal to what? The final velocity of the car is zero, since it stops here, right? So then you have negative half m v initial squared, and a negative and a negative cancel, okay? So in this case, the force, since in both cases the, the brakes are locked, you're using the maximum amount of force in both situations. So the force is the same. So since the force is the same, I don't really need to calculate what it is. I'm just trying to find the ratio of the two. So I could even make it disappear right now, since in both cases it's the same. Half is the same. I'm not really interested in that. The mass of the car is not changing. So all that really matters is that the distance that the car goes is proportional to the velocity squared, the initial velocity squared, right? So we can make a ratio we can say d1 over v1 squared is equal to d2 over v2 squared. Since distance is proportional to velocity squared, d1 over v1 squared, d2 over v2 squared. What's the distance one? Uh, 20, right? What's the initial velocity? 50 squared. And what's the distance two? We don't know. What's the uh, uh, velocity to? 150, right? Square. Now, do I really need to square that? I'm kind of feeling like in a lazy mood right here. Do I really need to square 50? Do I really need to square 150? No. The 150, I can cross multiply here, right? And we get what? 20 times what? I could take 150 and put it over 50, and I can square it d2, right? So this one went over to the top. 150 squared over 50 squared is the same as 150 divided by 50 squared. So 20 times what? Uh, 3 squared d2. So here is the basic gist of the idea. You could have even done this kind of quickly now that you know how to do it. If you go three times as fast, you're going to travel nine times the distance, three squared, right? So you're going to end up getting what? Nine, 180 meters, okay? So the answer is what? E, 180 meters, right? 
So the, you could now do this quickly. Three times as uh, fast, you double it, uh, you square it, you get nine. Nine times uh, the original distance is 20, so you get uh, 180. How about if you were going 100 kilometers an hour? If you go twice as fast, how long is it going to take you uh, to go? Well, twice as fast, square two, you get four. Four times 20, you get what? 80. Well, then there's the choice 80 wasn't here, but the choice, one of the choices would have been 80. And then you could do this for any speed. Usually they kind of teach you this in the driving school. They say that for every time you double the speed, you go four times as much, right? That's why in the freeways, it's uh, dangerous to go faster because when you're going faster, the distance, the stopping distance is increasing proportionally to the velocity squared, right? So when you go from 60 to 80, 80 to 100, 100 to 120, your stopping distance is going like crazy. So from 60 to 120, what's gonna happen to your stopping distance? Well, that's double the velocity, stopping distance four times as much, right? 4D. So uh, if you get in an accident or you have to slow your car down, it's gonna take you four times the distance to slow it down. So that's why they teach you this and uh, the speeds, uh, higher speeds usually end up getting you in big time accidents because of that reason. Okay, thank you much. So now we're gonna go on to the problems of this uh, test to review.